Hey, good morning, friends. It's Thursday, uh, April 14. Hope you're, uh, hope you're doing well. Hope the week is going well for you. We are, of course, in Holy Week. Today is Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday. I mentioned yesterday that the word Monday means uh, commandment. And the, the phrase Monday, Thursday refers to that moment in the book of John during the upper room where Jesus gives a new commandment uh, to his disciples. And the commandment is to love one another. As I have loved you, so you should love one another. That's where the word commandment, that's where the word monday uh, comes from. And, and, and of course, the whole, the whole moment on Thursday of Holy Week is the time in the upper room. Uh, the upper room discourse is what it's called in the book of John. It's in the other books as well. Uh, actually, it's interesting, the, 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 the institution of the Lord's Supper, uh, we actually don't see that in John, we see it in the other, other books, and, um, and Monday itself comes from, from the book of John, so it's kind of interesting that that's how it plays out. But the story altogether has Jesus gathering with his disciples. Jesus knows that his time is short, it's the last day he has with them and, and, and the words that are given to the disciples in all the books during uh, in all four gospels during that that scene are some of the most powerful in the in, in the whole bible um, sort of Jesus' last words as Jesus goes uh, as Jesus heads to the cross and, and, and last words are, are important right we know we know that so we pay particular attention to them well, some other words that are important are the words of, of the Psalms, and today we're looking at Psalm number 9, Psalm number 9. Let's take a moment to settle our minds and our hearts, and I will read this for us. Psalm 9. I will give thanks to you, O Lord. With all my heart, I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and they perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause. Sitting enthroned as the righteous judge, you have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your trust Know your name, trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord, enthroned in Zion, proclaimed among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the works of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead, all the nations that forget God. But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord. Do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know that they are only mortal. You know how that, that a feeling, um, that we often attribute it to teenagers, uh, that, that they feel invincible. Um, that they don't think anything can get them down. You know, I remember when I was a young kid myself, when I was, uh, you know, growing up, I, I remember hearing that, right? These, these, these kids, they think they're invincible. They think nothing can destroy them. I sort of get that, you know, that's a, 
how should I say this? That, that, that's sort of a, you grow out of that, right? You, you grow into, as you mature, you grow into a sense of reality of what you're, uh, of what's possible and what's realistic and what can happen. And, and we become more aware of dangers around us. We become more aware of our own, uh, our own vincibility, not invincibility, but our own, uh, our, 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 our our own fragility, if you will, uh, we, we, we won't live forever. We can be hurt. We can be torn down. Uh, and because of that, we, we need a savior, right? We need, we need one who is able to offer to us what we can't give to ourselves or, or do for ourselves. That's the salvation story, right? God is creating, is bringing about new creation and invites us to be uh, to, to be a part of that, but to be included in that, to be made new, because, because we are broken, because we are not complete. We are not yet what God desires for us to be. And, and, but, we, but there are these moments, right, where we lose track of that, and our arrogance and our, and our, sense, of, um, our, our sense of strength. We, we believe that we can take on the world, or we can solve problems for ourselves, or we can... Uh, or, or we can save ourselves through our own hard work or our planning or, or whatever it may be. And, and this prayer, the psalm, is, um, is sort of a way, the, the, the psalmist is crying to God and saying, those around me are feeling that way. Uh, and because of that, they're being reckless. They're being, um, they're, they're putting others in danger. And so, Lord, convince them, remind them of their own mortality, remind them that they are not enough. That's, that's the prayer of this. And I, th I think we can imagine praying this over different, different situations in the world. Um, you know, in your mind, when I say the word arrogant, in your mind pops up images, faces, names, perhaps. Uh, maybe it's yourself. Maybe in your, in your truest confession, you realize, wow, I've been arrogant uh, and I need to be reminded. And so we can pray for that. The psalmist prays for that, and we can pray for that too. We live in a world that is steeped in arrogance, right? And we we need humility. God needs to bring about humility to us so that we would return to God. I think that's part of the message here. Hey, let's take some time to pray. Please join me. Loving God, we, we thank you that you are strong when we are weak. We thank you that you bring about your life and love and hope, that you are a good God that gives to us all that we need. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer. And today we do pray um, for the folks that, we're, uh, folks that we're praying for and situations we know of. We pray for Barb. Pray for Ian. Lord, we pray for the Runsfold family, the pa passing of, of Dick, and pray for all who mourn his loss. Lord, we pray for Connie, Edna May's daughter, who had throat surgery. Earlier this week, we pray that you would bring her healing. Continue to pray for Derek, who, who uh, 21 year old, who uh, was in an accident regarding a campfire. And, uh, has, has, has significant burns. We pray that you would bring peace and healing to him. Continue to pray for Tom, Kate's dad, as he, as he um, recovers from quadruple bypass surgery. Give him healing, Lord. We pray for Jennifer, cancer treatment. We pray for Leslie, as leukemia. We pray for Muriel and Chuck in their living situation. Lord, for uh, Zach, keep him safe in Poland, Lord. We pray for Doris, the passing of her daughter. Give her hope. Give her your presence. We pray for Barb and are grateful for uh, her, um, her progress in recovery, the possibility of being able to go home and be with the family as they care for, for her. Lord, we pray for Carol, pray for Carol's mom, be with them, give them healing, Lord. So God, we lift these up and we also pause to lift up, friends, whatever else, whatever other prayer, person, situation is on your heart today.
And so, Lord, we thank you that we can trust that you hear our prayers and that you receive them and that you use them and that you draw us closer to you through them. Lord, today as we go into the world, be with us, guide us, lead us. Take us to the interactions you'd have us have. Put us in the situations you'd encourage us to be a part of. And Lord, in all things, give us your presence, give us your peace. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, good to be with you this morning, Monday, Thursday. Getting closer to tomorrow, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and then, of course, Resurrection Sunday. It's a very big week in the life of the church. I hope you have a chance to sort of take in these various elements. There's certainly a wide range of things that are going on and, uh, and emotions that it takes us through. So give yourself to that as we move closer to the cross this week. Uh, Friends, good to be with you. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.